What is going on you guys? Avery here, back at it again with a brand new video wanting to discuss this hell of a ban list. It was, it was a huge list, I know it's it's hard to keep track of a lot of the things that happened, uh, but but don't worry, I'm going to keep you straight. Uh, it was three whole cards that you're looking at your screen right now as I try to fix my damn curtain because we still have a ghetto ass setup, uh, which is why I don't ever show my face. But it's, th it's three cards. It's just three cards. I know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of cards. These three cards. <laughs> Multifaker, Unicorn, Ulti, Canna, Hawk, the three. Now, um, I discussed with one of my buddies, shout out to my buddy Murphy, about this list and how it didn't really surprise me that Konami didn't make a lot of changes. And my reasoning for that is because that oh, Konami does not want to acknowledge the existence of unlicensed uh, Yu-Gi-Oh simulators, and I even watched Simo's video on the balance, just interested to see what it is that he was going to say, and his reaction was hilarious, I mean, I, I was laughing my ass off, but one of the top comments said, this ban list is a perfect representation of Konami saying, we do not acknowledge unlicensed Yu-Gi-Oh products, i.e. EDO Pro, Dueling Nexus, Dueling Book, things like that, and I think that this really does show that, because you know, I was hoping that things like Block Dragon would get hit, um, you know, Golden Lord would somehow get hit. I was hoping that a lot of things that people were hoping to happen would happen, but I didn't really think that they would because there's no competitive events to go off of. And so I wanted to sort of compare why this ban list is really the worst ban list that we have ever had in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. And really, believe it or not, I'm actually going to defend Konami for once because it's not really their fault. So what I did was that I looked back here at an article that was posted back in 2012. And it's by, I believe, Kevin Tewart? Uh, yeah, Kevin Tewart, who I believe still works for Konami. And what he did was that he posted a three-part series on um, the March 2012 ban list. The reason why that he did this, which was very historic at the time because... We had never really received any sort of word from Konami of why they made the changes that they made on a ban list until this point, May, May 18th, 2012. So two months after the list came out, because Konami was getting so much backlash from this March 2012 ban list. And the reason why they got so much backlash was because at the time, Konami of TCG and OCG in Japan were connected, right? So we had the same ban list. So, for example, if... Uh, Soul Charge got banned in the OCG, it was going to get banned here in the TCG. Well, back in March 2012, we had decks like Windups, where if you haven't played against that deck at full power, the shit's insanely busted. Because at full power, the deck could loop your hand of five, six cards, depending on how they opened. Um, normally, it was six. You know, they made Topologic Gumblar Dragon look like dog shit. <laughs> like, it was just, that's what the deck did. It went first, it looped you. If it went second, it played cards to blow away your back row like MST and Heavy Storm. And they could just rip your hand to shreds. Um, or they could, uh, you know, go the OTK route and make three, um, number 64, or number 16, Shockmaster, whatever the hell the number is. And they would just shut off all your effects and kill you. And so this ban list got so much draw, so much um, pushback because at, at the time, what they did on this ban list was that they hit everything that was in the plant synchro deck. So like they banned Spore, they banned Glow Up Bowl, they uh, they hit Lumina to semi limited, they hit uh, Six Samurai, uh, they put Sheehan Smoke Signal to two, they hit TGs like they hit TG Striker and the Agent of Mystery Earth. They hit these cards that people were like, "What the hell kind of list is this? This doesn't touch X Sabers, which were also very broken at the time. It didn't touch Infernity. It didn't touch Windups. It didn't touch any of these things." And people were pissed. And the reason was was because of the fact that the OCG did not have those cards yet. They didn't even have X Sabers at the time because uh, X Sabers weren't doing as. Or I'm sorry, they did have they did have X Sabers. But they did not have X Saber Dark Soul, which was a TCG exclusive for a time. So X Sabers weren't doing as well over there as they were here in the States because they didn't have Dark Soul. And Dark Soul was absolutely busted back then because at the time, back in 2012, you could stack your Dark Soul. So if you sent Dark Soul to the graveyard three times and you would get three searches, it was bananas. And so I feel that Konami made these changes 
based upon the fact that they don't have any data to go off of for events. And they, Kevin Tewart mentions this in his article where he says that, um, if I could find the spot here, uh, a lot of veteran tournament watchers understand what's frequently going on just under the radar. A lot of people don't look too deeply underneath the final results and jump to conclusions that this deck slash card is overpowered. He's talking about decks topping events and how it may not actually look like how it is depending on the number of players playing a deck. Uh, and that assumption can make a certain amount of people sense if you don't have all the information about what happens at every YCS and regional event in the country. And of course, the average player doesn't have that information, but we do. So essentially what he's saying there is that when the when events happen, YCS, or regional, nationals, worlds, you name it, they take that data and they say, okay, uh, this, this, and this topped. Uh, these cards were the most played. Okay, this card probably needs to get hit. This card needs to get banned. This card needs to go to three. This card wasn't really seen a whole lot. We can get rid of that. Or, you know, we can unlimit this. But they didn't have any data to go off of. In fact, I think really the only quote-unquote data that they had was the last UDS that happened right before the whole virus shit happened. And so Konami kind they probably just looked at that one event and were like, well... Invoke Shadal was the best deck, but now Eldritch and all this stuff is out, and they can't hit any of that because, I mean, the shit's new. I mean, you can't expect them to hit Access Code Talker when the shit just came out, especially, too, because the Eternity Code set was sort of caught in a, um, uh, a, a rock and a hard place, so to speak, for lack of a better term, because, you know, Europe had Edco at the time of release, but then they didn't get Secret Slayers until a couple weeks after we do, and then the reverse was for us. We got Secret Slayers right on time, and then we got Edco like a couple months later. So Konami kind of had their hands tied. They're like, well, shit, what do we do here? Like, Alter Guys doesn't really play. Let's put Multifaker 3. Okay, Dragma's coming out in September. They can be played with Necros. Let's put Unicorn 3. That's what the OCG's doing. Ritual Beasts aren't doing anything. Let's put Ulti Canahawk to 3. I mean, th their hands were kind of tied. I feel like that they that they put this list together and they were like, this is the best that we can do, you know, with the data that we have. Um, you know, could they have maybe done stuff like bring back Widow Anchor and stuff? Yeah, of course that they could have. But I think at the end of the day, because the coronavirus has literally just put a pause on everything, I think that they just thought it would be better to sort of leave the game as stable as they could until we get through this quarantine period, which... If Konami delays until July, they're going to be screwed because I can guarantee you people like me and I know a lot of other people are just going to quit the game. Um, but they have to do what's best for the game and what's going to make them money. And quite honestly, you know, they need to sell Toon Chaos. They need to sell Secret Slayers, <clears throat> the Sacred Beast Structure deck. Um, they need to sell Rise of the Duelist in like August or September. They need to sell Eternity Code. We have a lot of things. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. We have a lot of things coming out even within these next three months, that could really shape up the game. So, you know, without any sort of events to go off of and any, I guess, quote-unquote, real data, even though online events can technically count and things like that, you know, their hands are tied. And I think that they just had to do what they thought was best. And, and you know, would you rather have had at least something for the ban list, which in this case was three cards, or would you have rather just had nothing. Now, that's not to excuse the fact that this list is still the worst list ever. It is the smallest list and the worst list ever created. But even though it's a bad list, it's not really Konami's fault. They don't have any power over this virus. And, you know, with the 2012 list, they had power. And at the same time, they had to do what was originally doing well in the TCG, which was Plant Synchro. It was also doing well in the OCG, so they killed it. Now, of course, we don't have this problem because the OCG and the TCG aren't connected ban list wise anymore, but it, it's, it's considered one of the worst ban lists, and this is up there with it, but not because of Konami. It's because of the fact that they literally had no choice, and they're not going to acknowledge unlicensed Yu-Gi-Oh uh, products or simulators or anything like that. It's just how it is. You know, that's how a company is run. If I'm running a company that makes nipple tassels, and someone has a simulator that simulates how to put on a nipple tassel, and it's not licensed by me, but it has my company name on it, I'm not going to acknowledge it. <laughs> because then it looks like I'm endorsing that product so that you should go use said product instead of buying my product. <laughs> you know, it's, it's business sense 101. So... You know, I'm not happy with this list either. I'm, I'm interested to try out Altergeist. 
Um, but my locals isn't even open back up yet, which is really asinine considering that Florida is pretty much back to normal at this point. But let me know what you guys think. I mean, you know, Konami is a business, unfortunately, and, you know, they don't want to acknowledge online simulators. My buddy Murphy said they should have brought back more stuff. I agree. But at the same time, the less shit I have to deal with, the better, because I'm I don't want to have to deal with ABC. You know, uh, my someone was telling me the other day that, you know, Buster Dragon should have came back to three with these other cards come back through. I'm like, no, Buster Dragon's not coming back to three, especially with needle fiber shenanigans. No, 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 no. Buster Dragon could be banned for all I care. That deck is so aggravating. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next chapter.